Welcome back, everybody. So yesterday I ran a poll asking people what they thought about the fact that NBC News was about to interview the Capitol Police officer who shot and killed Ashley Babbitt. It looks like most of us agree that this is not a good idea and would lead to a very bad outcome and I think that we've been proven right on that. One of the reasons I knew this interview was going to be a complete waste of time is who's giving it? Lester Holt, a well-known Democrat donator and a guy who's outright admitted that he can't be fair to both sides of the story. The unprecedented attacks on the press in this period I'm sure will fill plenty of books and be studied in classrooms. But I have a few early observations I'll share about where this moment brings us and what we can learn. Number one is, I think it's become clearer that fairness is overrated. The only thing this interview has done is cement this new standard that it's okay for an officer to shoot somebody that's unarmed. They just, one, have to be white, and two, be political opposition to the Democrat Party. I mean, the fact is, way more unarmed white people are shot by police, but you never hear about that, only the cherry-picked stories that involve a white officer and a black suspect. We know this because for the last couple years now, we've been told that any time a person of a certain skin color is is shot by a police, whether they're unarmed or not, it's murder. So let's just go through this interview real quick. I have a couple things I want to say about it. His decision to use deadly force against a rioter as she climbed through a barricaded door that leads to the house chamber. In the months since, he's been the target of threats. Cutting off my head, um, you know, very vicious and cruel things. Racist things? There were some racist attacks as well. All right, so right off the bat, we're being told that this guy is actually a victim. And of course, he's a victim of racism. Even though in this situation, it was the black cop who shot the unarmed white lady. So you can see already that the normal standards that would be applied here are just right out the window. We literally have violent communist mobs under the banner of Antifa and BLM showing up not just to cops' homes to threaten them, but the Democrat Party's political opposition. And these people are being incited and being given cover from the media. I'm going to tell you what I think about the rest of this interview, but first take just a quick moment to hear about this special offer from healthwithdronetech.com. Studies show that the adult body produces 10% less collagen every decade. If you're over 40, that should terrify you. Collagen is the glue that holds our bodies together. If you're seeing more defined wrinkles or feeling lethargic, realize it has nothing to do with your diet, sleep schedule, workout routine, or whether you smoke or drink. It has all to do with your body's natural collagen production. This is why I highly recommend healthwithdronetech.com. I've noticed that I look younger, have fewer wrinkles, and have more energy since taking my multi-collagen. My skin specifically looks and feels so much firmer. I didn't have to get on a new diet, sleep more, or start exercising for it to work. Anyone over 40 should be taking advantage of this new opportunity in anti-aging technology. Learn more by going to www.healthwithdronetech.com. Furthermore, you'll get 51% off your first bottle if you order today, plus a 60-day money-back guarantee. I believe I showed the uh, utmost courage on January 6th. <laughs> Okay, I'm having trouble keeping up here. So now your job is to shoot unarmed people who aren't presenting a threat. If Ashley Babbitt was truly coming through the window and you felt threatened, why didn't you just grab her, tackle her, and arrest her? Of course you didn't do that. You just pointed the gun and murdered her. Responsible that day for securing the house chambers, Bird couldn't see what Americans were witnessing on their TVs, but he could hear it in the pleas from other officers. Were you afraid that day? I was very afraid. What are you hearing on your radio? I'm hearing about the breaches of different uh, barricaded areas, uh, officers being overrun, officers being down. Did you ever hear a call or a report of shots fired during any of this? As a matter of fact, I did. There was reports of shots fired through the house main door. Except there were no shots at the Capitol. What is he talking about? He just lets him make the claim. And now it's out there in the public conscious. Typical drive-by media bullshit. I wonder if he was hearing any radio chatter about the fact that most of those people had just been let in and were walking around peacefully as if they were on a tour. I mean, even in the video that they just showed there, if this was such a murderous, threatening mob, then why were they staying within the velvet ropes? They want you to believe that something way worse happened there than what actually happened. And they prove it every time they show the footage of people pushing or being mildly 
wildly rowdy with police or just walking around or maybe just waving flags. If this is so threatening, then why didn't the officers at the Capitol feel as threatened when mobs of Democrats invaded to try and stop the confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh? Or how about when George Bush won in 2004, Democrats claimed the election was stolen and then they rioted and actually attacked Bush's motorcade. Bush's limo hit the gas to prevent an even larger riot. Yet somehow, nobody was shot and killed. Officers barricaded the door, what he considered the last line of defense. I had been yelling and screaming as loud as I was, please stop, get back, get back, stop. We had our weapons drawn. There's a gun! There's a gun! Bird, only his hand and gun visible, targeted a figure trying to climb through a window. You're ultimately hoping that your commands will be complied with. He was 35 years old, an Air Force veteran, Trump supporter, and QAnon follower. Well, there you go. That was the justification for the shooting right there. Forget what she was doing. She was a Trump supporter. Oh, and she was a QAnon follower. We've been told just how dangerous these QAnon people are. Of course, no, they haven't rioted and burned down cities or killed dozens of people or ambushed and murdered cops. They haven't done any of that. But they're really dangerous, we promise. We're just gonna keep repeating that claim until it's true. But this is exactly what I'm talking about, folks. Lester Holt and this guy want you to think that it was okay to kill this woman because she's a Trump supporter and because she believed in QAnon and she was trespassing. I mean, can you even see what's going on in that video they keep showing? They just show him go almost to point blank range and shoot. He keeps claiming that he was telling everybody to stop, stop, but you can't even see him. His arms are just poking out from behind a corner. Not to mention those doors are closed and everybody's pretty loud. You can't can't really hear anything. Is there any actual proof that he did give these commands? Of course not. And does Lester Holt ask for it? Of course not. So it seems like that's the game they're trying to play here. Like, oh, well, she wasn't complying with orders. One, she was not being arrested. Again, she was surrounded by fully geared riot police who were not arresting her. And what evidence is there at all that she heard any commands? Again, I'd like to point out that you couldn't even see this guy. He was around the corner, the doors were closed, and it was really loud. And to be giving commands that he expects someone with to comply with or else he's gonna shoot and kill them, he needs to make sure that they actually even hear his commands. Is there any indication whatsoever that Ashley Babbitt heard any commands from this officer before being shot? I seriously doubt it because as you saw in that video, he was hiding around the corner. She probably didn't even see him as she was up in that window. But again, we don't know because there's no real investigation into these details because any one of these little details could crumble their narrative completely. When you fired, wh what could you see? Where were you aiming? You're taught to aim for center mass. Uh, the subject was sideways, and I could not see her full motion of her hands or anything. Um, oh, yeah, I know. that Everything you're saying sounds like it's completely legitimate to have shot and murdered this woman. I mean, look at his face. He almost seems like he doesn't believe his own bullshit. Why doesn't Lester Holt ask him if there was any other measures he could have taken besides lethal force? Because that's exactly what he would do if it had been a white cop and a black BLM protester. I mean, just look at how insane the media went when the National Guard had to use tear gas against a violent mob that was attacking the White House. And oh, by the way, all of those headlines against Trump turned out to be complete lies. Yeah, in this case, somehow a 98 pound unarmed woman was somehow some kind of insane threat that she had to be murdered. Oh, I guess her movement, you know, caused the uh, discharge to, to fall where it did. And what did you think this individual was doing at that, at that moment? She was posing a threat. The fact that you weren't aware whether she was armed or not, did that alter the decision making? It did not. There were other officers in other potentially life-threatening situations who didn't use their service weapons that day. Um, I'm sure it was a terrifying situation. I can only control my reaction, my training, my level of expertise, because it's my job. No, you didn't. You just murdered a 98 pound unarmed woman. That's all you did. You didn't do your job. If that was your job, then other officers would have done the same as you, but they didn't. The officers who were literally right next to Ashley Babbitt didn't feel any need to either arrest her or shoot her. You're the only one who did that. It's all very strange because what have we been hearing for the last couple of years? That any time a police shoots somebody who's unarmed, it was wrong, it was murder, and it demands justice. Yet somehow, the media always seems to cherry pick the stories that involve a white cop and a black suspect, while always ignoring the details because they're inconvenient to the narrative. A great example of this would be Jacob Blake, who sexually assaulted a woman, then fought the police who were there to arrest him, while he had a knife and was trying to get in his car to kidnap two children. 
children. They shot him and the media acted like the guy was completely innocent and the cops were murderers, which led to riots incited essentially by the Democrats and their state media who didn't want to talk about the inconvenient details. All right, folks, I'm going to stop it there for my own health. If you want to donate to the Justice for Ashley Babbitt Legal Fund, I'll put the link for that in the description or pinned comment. I think it's an important thing to do because ultimately they look at us all like Ashley Babbitt and they can rationalize doing the exact same thing to all of us.